Hey, Cami here, welcome. Today I wanna to talk about your herbal kitchen. And I talk about a lot of different things and I am the author of The Herbal Kitchen, the book, The Herbal Kitchen. So today I do, I wanna talk about my book, The Herbal Kitchen and what it means for you and your herbal kitchen. So there are uh, 260 recipes in this book. So it's kind of like, people are like, well, how do you crack that nut, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a lot of recipes. It's I'll, I'll tell you the story of how I wrote that book. It's, it's, it's actually a little bit crazy. It's not crazy, but it's kind of amazing. But the thing is, is that <clears throat> what I want to talk about is what it means for you, what an herbal kitchen is, what an herbal kitchen is not, and how it can all shake out in your everyday life. So let's just get started. Um, and so I will talk a little bit about what's in the book and how to how, where to start, like what, you know, how can you really enter into my book, The Herbal Kitchen? But here is what an herbal kitchen is not. An herbal kitchen is not you being like this amazing, over the top chef, great cook, even knowing how to cook. OK, you can have an amazing herbal kitchen if you if you don't cook, even if you eat fast food, you should you if you eat fast food or a lot of to go food, you definitely want to set up your herbal kitchen. You definitely want to herbalize your kitchen because, you know, because that food needs an herb, it needs the herbal kitchen even more. <laughs> OK, um, and so it's yeah, it's not about being a great cook. It's not about having an over the top herb garden that you're, you know, harvesting fresh from every day. That is awesome. But you don't have to have an herb garden at all. You can use all dried herbs. You can, you know, so it doesn't, you know, it's not these pictures of like, oh, I'm a great cook. I'm a great gardener. No, having an herbal kitchen, it's for anybody really, right? And you don't also always have to be so herbally inspired, like all the pictures on Instagram, like, oh, you know, and so let's talk about what it is, okay? What an, what I, what an herbal kitchen is, hey, everyone. Um, hey, Patricia, you have inspired me for three years, and now um, I have a certified kitchen ready to herbalize. Thank you so much. Good. Okay, so what is an herbal kitchen? All right, what to me, what's an herbal kitchen to me? I've been teaching herbal medicine for uh, 34 years now. Uh, I wrote the herbal kitchen actually in 2008. Uh, it was published in 2010, and then it was republished in um, 2019. And the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of herb books, um, what people do is they go, oh, I'm going to write a book or I'm going to write a cookbook or a kitchen book. And then they just start researching and then they put the recipes together for that book. That's not how the recipes came together for this book. This book I had already been teaching for over 15 years, um, a, a year long herbal mentorship. And the, the recipes, the 200 plus recipes in this book were time tested over and over again with hundreds of students. And that's what really makes, you know, you can have a good recipe, but it, after you make it five, 10 times with a lot of different, a lot of input, then it's like, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit, then that's what makes a great recipe. So that's how the recipes in this book were born. They weren't just me, it were me and my, you know, my students, um, that have been in class with me since uh, 1988. So, okay, so what does it mean? What does it mean to me? What I've, you know, kind of um, tuned into over the years to have an herbal kitchen, an herbal kitchen is, is to have enough herbal infused kitchen staple kitchen pantry items that are that are herbified that are full of herbs right so what we do is we put a little effort on the front end of our herbal staples our herbal condiments our herbalized pantry so that when you reach for something to use in your cooking it's full of herbs or herbs right so almost every meal that we eat um, it's got some kind of fat, right? You've cooked with coconut oil, olive oil, or butter or ghee, right? You, you, you use a fat. Almost most meals, that's why there's salt on every table. Almost every table, right? Is because we use a salt. And then um, sometimes we use a sugar, we use an acid. And so what you want to do is all of those things, your acid, acid your sugars, your salts, your fat, um, you want to infuse those things in advance with herbs so that you have herb salts, is that you have herbal vinegar, that you have herbal herbal oils, that you have herbal ghee, herbal butter, uh, so that when you go to reach for those things, they're full of herbs. And so what it means is that like, you know, you can just be eating a bowl of rice 
or some roasted cauliflower, right? But then you pull your herbal vinegar, your herbal infused vinegar, your herbal infused olive oil, your herbal infused um, sprinkle, herbal sprinkles. I'm really big on herbal sprinkles. Or um, yeah, so you've got your herbal fat, you've got your herbalized vinegar, you've got your herbalized salt, your herbalized sprinkles, and pretty soon you put that on just like some lettuce or rice or uh, some steamed vegetables, and it's like, wow, <laughs> now you've got like 10 herbs in that meal, and you didn't have to even really do anything because you have an herbal kitchen, right? <laughs> you've got an herbal infused pantry, your kitchen staples, your fat, your salt, your, your, um, you know, your vinegar, your sugars are infused with herbs. And so it's just there. And so the thing is, is that, and it's not like you're just adding those 10 or 15 herbs right then they've been infusing into that vinegar or that oil or that salt for a month or longer. And so the herbs have had time to mellow and blend and synthesize. And so the flavor it's just, it's just so good. It's just so much better. And so, so yeah, that's what an herbal kitchen is to me. It's not, again, it's not about having the ultimate garden, herb garden, and the ultimate, you know, herbal, being an ultimate herb, herbal chef. It's about having your kitchen stocked with, you know, so I always have like lots of herbal vinegars and lots of culinary oils and lots of herb salts, right? So this is an orange peel salt. This turns salmon and chicken and salad. It's just amazing. And so that's that's really what it's about. And so in the herbal kitchen, you have entire chapters on, um, you know, uh, herbal honey, how to infuse herbs with honey, herbal vinegar, herbal oils, and herbal cordials. A lot of different, a lot of cooking also can involve alcohol, right? And so if you create, I mean, I have a lot of really good <laughs> herbal cordials, good seasonal cordials. And so you, um, you get the herbs into your cordials and you can cook with that. Herbal ghee, herbal sprinkles, herbal salts, and that's all in here. And then I also have a chapter on herbal meals. So seasonal herbal meals. So if it's like summer and you're like, hmm, what herbs are in season? And um, hmm, looks like I'm, yeah, you can be like, what herbs are in season? What would be good to put into an herbal meal this summer? I've got herbal meals for summer, spring, winter, fall. So I would love to know what, do you have any questions about your herbal kitchen, about how, how do you get, how do you herbify your meals? What do you do to make sure that, you know, when you're just feeling like, oh, I can just barely, you know, make oatmeal or rice. How do you make sure that that oatmeal, I mean, my, our oatmeal is so herbalized, you know, it's like the, the water that we cook it in has herbal salt in it. When we go to, when we go to eat it, we use herbal ghee, we use an herbal sprinkle, um, we use an herbal honey. So it's like you, we've got 10 herbs uh, on that meal. So Pearly Everlasting, hello, Danielle. She's saying, I love the breakfast sprinkle and I give it as a gift. It makes pancakes and waffles a delicacy. Oh my gosh, I love that word. I know, right? You you get, you, so the thing is, is you can, you can buy herbal sprinkle blends, but it's a lot cheaper to make them yourself. This is one of my herbal breakfast sprinkles and it's got ginger, cinnamon, cardamom. Duh, it's like so basic. You put this like Danielle's saying on pancakes or waffles or oatmeal or any kind of dessert or yogurt, you know, it's like, it just, it just changes the game, right? And it really helps other people. So I have a family that is not really interested in my whole herbal trip at all. Um, but they're like, oh yeah, the, the, the herbal sprinkles, I hand those over. I've realized that when I have that on my food, it just tastes better, right? So um, Patricia is saying your spring asparagus recipe in the herbal kitchen is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> asparagus is one of my favorite vegetables and there's so many great herbs and I love that. There's also an entire chapter on pesto in here and that I consider an herbal kitchen staple, uh, an herbal kitchen condiment, even though it only lasts like a week, but every week or two weeks you can make an herbal pesto. And then again, if you just like, oh, I just feel like, you know, I can, all I can do is scramble an egg. 
you put your pesto on that scrambled egg and like Danielle says, it's a delicacy. It's like, oh, wow. Now that's let's yeah, let's scramble an egg. Right. Uh, or let's have some egg with pesto. And the pesto, the pesto recipe in my book, um, I give you the basic like the framework of pe making pesto so that you can then plug any um, really mild green, intensely tasting green and also your really intense uh, how much like if you want to use really intense or, you know, more intense herbs like rosemary, lavender, things like that. So. Um, so, yeah. Hey, Angela. Welcome. If you have any questions like what tell me, I would love to hear. I'm here. I'm here with you right now. Um, what how's your herbal kitchen? How are you doing with what I consider an herbal kitchen? It's like, again, it's the just having these so that you're right there. It's like oh, I have like four culinary oils and four herbal vinegars and at least five sprinkles and, and all kinds of just, you know, different herbal sprinkle blends, right? And when they're right there on the counter or on the table, it's just so easy. And, and the other cool thing is that your family members or the people that you eat with can customize it, right? So we have, I have one family member that is super hot and like, just do not give him any, anything hot, right? But my constitution, I'm a little bit slower and colder and more kapha. And so for me to have a little cayenne, to have some ginger, to have those hotter spices is really good for me. But it's that per my son is so pitta and so fiery that it's really bad for him. <laughs> where my husband's like, just right. Like he's right in the middle. He can go either way. Right. So how do you cook for that? Right. And so that's the great thing about having all these chapters broken up into herbal vinegars, herbal oils, herbal sprinkles, herbal ghee, so that you have what, what your family can handle and you know, what, what everybody needs. Um, So um, she's saying, oh, my goodness, my pesto game has been totally expanded by your book. Oh, good, good. Pesto is, uh, I say in my house, we have earth, water, fire, air, and pesto. <laughs> so, yeah. So what's your main herbal condiment that you use? Do you, do you have herbal sprinkles? Um, I love the herbal sprinkle blend idea. Yeah. So your herbal sprinkles, Angela, are so, they, they are a game changer because again, if you have young ones or you have people that really aren't into the herbal thing, you start putting those herbal sprinkles on the table and pretty soon they're, they're gone. Right. I have some really good, like I was talking about earlier, I have very, they're very time tested recipes that I created with my students over a year, 15 to 20 year period. So everything's been super time tested and um, tasted and refined and refined again. And so, yeah, again, I, I wrote this book actually in 2008, but it's very timely. You know, it's like l knowing how to make a good, effective herbal honey or an herbal vinegar, whether to use dry or flat, fresh plant, your herbal ghees, how to make an herbal ghee. All of these pantry staples are, um, you're, you know, again, just herbifying your kitchen cabinet. Um, Patricia saying, my Ayurvedic clients have benefited so greatly by your recipes. Good. That's good. Okay. I'm just seeing... Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your endless inspiration. Oh, you know, it's, yeah, I've been at it a while and it's really, it's the plants, the herbs that, that just keep me going. They, I go into my cabinet and I go, oh, it's time to talk about this, or we need to talk about that, or, or I'm talking to myself, right? It's like, I'm, I'm busy. I'm homeschooling my son. I'm teaching herbal medicine full time. And, I, I'm busy. And so I need the reminder just as much as anybody else. It's like, I need my herbal kitchen. I'm not always super inspired with my meals. And so by having all these herbal condiments, having my herbal kitchen, my herbal pantry stocked with these staples, these herbal staples, herbal infused staples um, that have had time to really blend and taste good. It's, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole different life, really. It's a, it's a different game. So she's saying, Dan Daniel's saying, in the winter, your coffees, honey is on the counter all the time. Okay, yeah. So I have some really good herbal honey recipes in here for all seasons. And I have a good co um, winter coffees, honey that, that we need, that people need. So yeah. Kale saying, I absolutely love your book, The Herbal Kitchen. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's, again, it's what 
you know, some people just have this idea of like, oh, this, I, you know, I can't do this. You can do this, you know, or people have perfect pictures or they think they have to be something that they're not. No, it can be super simple. Like I said, it's, it's something that even if you eat packaged food, you definitely want these herbal staples in on your food. Right. Um, and so, so then what it is, is just like, okay, how can I get, how, how can I get herbs into the fat that I use? What are the fats that I use? How can I herbify them? What are the acids that I use? So what are the different kinds of vinegars? And so I inf also infuse um, garlic into my tamari. Um, and so what are the fats? What are the vinegar? What are the salts? What do, how do I use salt? Right. What are the herbs? Uh, I have a lot of different herb, herbal salt recipes. And then when do I use honey? Do I use honey in my marinades? Honey is so good in salad dressing and sauces. Just a little bit. Right. And so is vinegar. Vinegar is, you know, you, you, you'll use a vinegar for a salad dressing or something, but a dash of vinegar in your pesto or your hummus. Just it's a, called brightening. You know, it brightens your food. So, yeah. I think that's, I think I kind of covered what I was going to say. Um, and Kate saying, yeah, once you do this, you never go back. <laughs> it's true. I know when I travel, oh God, it's like I carry my herbal spice blends with me because I'm just like, oh, the food, like I need more, I needed more herbified food. You know, we need herbs at every meal. Digesting your meal is hard work. You need herbs at herbs and spices with every meal. It's just, it's just how it is. Okay, you have any questions? I would love to hear if there's any other way that you've really enjoyed herbifying your kitchen staples, your herbal kitchen pantry. Okay. I, it looks like, yeah, looks like we're good. Okay, so that's my thing on the herbal kitchen and herbifying your kitchen and your pantry. And I hope you're, um, I hope you're eating lots of herbs in your food. <laughs> okay, good. Um, enjoy the rest of your day.